what's going on everyone it's brian and jim here drinking beer and play a game and welcome to another episode of the power hour yes hello everybody welcome to episode 206 thank you for joining us tonight brian it's god damn allergy season and it's already killing me dude it's um it's I, the first I tried. season i try to dude. not be a little sniffle jimmy on the show i try <laughs> i try so hard and it never works this is my first year i've ever tried um I've never tried the neti pot or whatever that is. Oh, I do that. Um, I got a version of that, though, that's like you just press the button and it automatically so you don't have to tilt your head back. So it's like a pressurized one. It actually works way better than I think a neti pot would because all you do is the angled thing. You put in your nose, press the button, and it shoots it up and comes out the other end. And you put it up your butt. D uh, Jim, it's not a Bud Light can. <laughs> oh, God, he turned it into a dildo. <laughs> God damn it. I can only assume because of you, the amount of things I've come across my timeline because of, like, you know, Bud Light and memes of it. I will say, some of them did make me laugh. Like, there's a... Uh, so somebody, like, went to all the Bud Light cases and put for rectal use only like stickers across all of them i'm like it's so stupid but i just laugh at the fact that like if you were like buying that and you saw it you'd be like oh what the hell because they actually look like legitimate like somebody took time and it wasn't just like a random i was like that's kind of funny like i don't care who you are it, it's just it's just a funny thing this is but the culture yeah, what? The, the memes of uh beer and bud light right now are who doggy i mean there's some saying they've lost billions of dollars. Other others saying they're up like four percent. There's others that are. It, it just it amazes me that yeah, like they're they're like everyone's like oh they've lost eight billion dollars, but like their stock only dropped like a tiny bit. So like that's how big their stock is. Is that you know a tiny drop will do that? But then again, it's like everyone in the world is talking about it right now. So you know is that just like almost like a loss leader for all this publicity? Who knows? I don't know. And now they're it's like, also now they turn around and have like the super pro American like manly man commercial and everyone's shitting on that now. So it's just so weird because on one hand, Bud Light was only drank by it's college say, kids, it's college, college kids, kids and old drunks. Yeah, and, and rednecks, right? Like so that was kind of their thing. And now I love that like the group i would i would pretty much associate most people that would be shitting on bud light would never drink it but now they're like having to support it so it's kind of funny now they almost have to support a beer that most people already know isn't any good yeah. so you have this very odd juxtaposition now how funny would it be if all right that was your like, favorite from our blind tasting though it was yours too no that was my least favorite no that was your favorite because you're you just were able to call out cores the or you called them all out. I didn't call them all out right, but we came on the same favorite. But Double here's the deal. The the thing about it that I think is just odd is how funny would it be now if, like, rednecks and everything, if they're like, you know what? We're just getting into craft beer. And all of a sudden, craft beer, like, blows up in the Midwest. And oh, that would just, be funny. How hilarious would that be? Oh, nothing but racist cowboys coming into all the, like, the microbreweries. <laughs> all, all the ironic tattoos just, like, the record scratches. I mean, it's, this is just one of those things, and say what you want, Bud Light, were they pandering? Did they make a mistake with this commercial? Probably. But at the same time, the outrage on both sides since then is ridiculous. But to your point, it's like no publicity, bad publicity, so who knows where it's going to go. Everyone will forget about it in X amount of years. But you know what? I will still take all this bullshit back and forth with both sides over seeing the same Pitbull commercial every single commercial break for two years straight during a sporting <laughs> game. Jim, Didn't matter what game racist. I watched. It was just goddamn Pitbull. You're just racist. That's all. Bases against Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chambers, uh, before we get into what we're drinking tonight, I think we need to give, give a shout out. So we just uh, went on Reliving Retro's show, and the links will be below. Rigney and Yeiser was a great episode. We uh, debated Shadow Run. Yeah, that was <laughs> by the end. They were like, "Man, that's the longest I think any episode we've ever done." Because you you put Brian and I together on opposite sides of something. There's just going to be bitching back and forth. That's all. Yeah, it is. yeah. I mean, they even threw out there that's like 
they're they're shocked we even like each other. Yeah, that <laughs> way we go. They, they, at the end, they're like, "You guys even like each other?" And that's not the first time we've heard that. So here, here's a, something I find funny is I look at like how you and I banter back and forth, and that's how we do it with like most of our friends. Yeah, I feel like you just bullshit. It leads me to believe, I guess not everyone's assholes like us from Philly, where, like, that's how you almost show love is by, like, shitting on each other. Yeah, <laughs> is by calling each other stupid and way worse stuff yeah. that you can't say on the internet. But then be, you're completely fine with each other. You're like, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, it's so natural, whereas, like, anyone else, I guess you can't just do that with everyone. That's hmm. it, it, It's fascinating to me, because I look abrasive? at, like... Maybe I'm the asshole. <laughs> no, it's everyone else that's wrong. That's right. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. It was, uh, you know, it brought back a game that for a series. I don't even know how many years ago we reviewed all that. Dude, it was like six years ago because I looked up our old reviews beforehand. Yeah. But no, it was it was fun. I mean, it's always fun with those guys. We had them on the podcast before. I'm sure we'll have them on again. So thank you guys for having us on. And uh, we will have the link to their page. If it's up Jim by then, will... if not, I'll word it out whenever it comes out. Exactly. So, Chambers, what uh, what are you drinking tonight, though? Well, Brian. And I know it's not Bud Light. No, it's not Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping it local. Coming from the good old Yards Brewing Company. It's their uh, Summer Crush, the citrus wheat beer. So 5% alcohol, uh, ale brewed with orange and lime. Not much else to say about it. <sighs> I didn't notice that they did that to their labels. They, they went a little, little minimalism on me there. A little bit, I tiny get... bit. It's not, it's not bad. It's still got a little something there to, you know, hang your hat on. But it's just not what it used to be. It's not like Jim the brawler, the classic design that they have for that or anything. I know simple. you're going to hate me and respect me at the same time for what I'm about to say. When you held up that label, the red background with I, I assume that's a lemon. I can't really see the details. It's an orange. Cause it's an orange. Yeah. Um, so that is very reminiscent of the original Dawn of the Dead poster with the yellowish zombie head on the red background. You're not wrong. Everything has to go <laughs> back to goddamn horror, but you're not wrong. <laughs> I said you would hate me, but, you know. One reference. One <laughs> reference that isn't horror related. That's all I <laughs> Hey, I did a Simpsons reference right at the beginning. <laughs> you need to even out that ratio. <laughs> nice. Well, Jim, then this is really going to piss you off. Speaking of horror, I dip back into my Halloween beers, one that me and you were going to share the one night. And um, it's just been sitting here, but it's the... Oma Gang All Hollows Treat Imperial Chocolate Peanut Butter Stout. Ooh. So it's like any other chocolate peanut butter stout, full of flavor. It's got a nice, very EC Comics look to it with like zombies coming out of a cemetery with bats and ghosts. Yes, I got this in bulk with all the other um, pumpkin beers, although this isn't pumpkin. It's just an Imperial Chocolate Peanut Butter Stout. Uh, 7.6%. So it's a hefty boy. I will say, you and I have talked about this. You're not supposed to age your beers. And this is, I know I got it when it was new, but still now we're talking seven months or whatever it is. And there's definitely at first a little bit of a metallic taste. A little tinge. Good sign. Yeah. But otherwise, it's delicious. Uh, it's very... You know what? I'm even gonna use a word we don't usually use enough, which is velvety. That that's the way I would we don't explain the enough. texture. Yeah, I'm tired of using the same words over and over. So I'm trying to expand. I need to get on your calendar of the day or word of the day calendar. Like that's you. right. Time to class up this joint. But actually, <sighs> speaking of uh, beers and stuff like that, so I just got back from a trip of visiting a buddy in North Carolina. And I tried a shitload of beer out there. <laughs> so he used to live in Florida, so he brought up a ton of Florida beers. And then I brought home a ton of North Carolina stuff, too. So we're going to have a lot of, uh, when we have our meetup days, we're going to have a yeah. long stretch of uh, sharing beers that I brought back with us. Nice. Yeah. No, I... Uh, Pretty good beer scene down there. Raleigh is Raleigh's a small small for a big city, but it's got some, uh, it's got some good uh, beer stuff around there. Nice. Yeah, no, uh... Eric actually previously had sent me, when he was in Florida, the um, Cigar City Brewing. Yeah. And I know he loved them and, and showed me some pumpkin beers they had that were actually nationwide considered one of the best. So, yeah, good good spot. 
Yeah, actually, I didn't, wasn't able to bring them home, but... Looking, 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 looking. Damn, I took a lot of pictures. Uh, uh, Three Suns Brewing. I think they're Florida-based, but if you want, like... Uh, it's either Florida or North Carolina, obviously. But if you want, like, a dessert beer that actually tastes like what is advertised, and I tried, like, six different ones of them, all of them actually kind of tasted like what they were going for. Like, mm-hmm. they're, like sugary but without being like too sugary or filmy on you but it just like tasted like what they were describing like for the first time ever i was like oh this does kind of taste like this interesting so yeah three sons is definitely one to check out if you have it anywhere near you yeah i've never even heard of them so you bastard for not bringing it back um well i couldn't just steal his private stash bro why not oh yeah fuck him i should have done it (laughs) He knows who you are. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> All right, Chambers, need a quick little camera adjustment there, but uh, yeah, glad to see you're back. And Jim, poor Jim, we talked about on Reliving Retro. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you what you've been playing, but I think the audience and everybody knows your struggle right now. The it bane just, of Jim's existence. It just never gets better. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, like, I don't have a ton of time for gaming because of stuff in real life. But fucking, like, I sat down here and there, booted up goddamn Tetris Tiny Nine again. And still, still haven't won. I'm gonna have a weekly update on this show until it finally happens, or it doesn't happen, and I kill myself. Jim, you know what? As I said, I think what you have to do at this point in the next couple days, and you get nights. You need to be recording it, maybe stream it, and we need to capture this on film because I want to see the pure joy of you finally doing that so you can delete it, be done with it, and know that's a chapter you don't have to go back to in your life. I might almost have to buy a new Switch so I can take a hammer to this Switch. (laughs) It's like a cursed unit. This is one time where you're like, I really would love to break something physical. (laughs) Yep. Break something beautiful. But, uh, yeah, besides <sighs> that, the only thing I really touched was, uh, and I talked about it on Reliving Light Trail, uh, new Pokemon Snap, because my daughter was super into Pokemon for a couple months. I bought Pokemon Snap. I was like, oh, this would be a great game to play together. Nice, simple concept. Just take pictures, see all the different Pokemon. I'm like, hey, do you want to play this? And she went, no. And I tried a few times. She kept saying no. So I'm going to get my money's worth, and I'm playing it, but eh, I'm not I'm not loving it. It's, it's, it's Pokemon Snap. If you like Pokemon Snap, you like Pokemon Snap. And if it doesn't grab you, you're going to be in for a, a long 10 hours. Women, right, Jim? Yeah, right? <laughs> God damn. There's no pleasing them. <laughs> That's starting young. <laughs> starting younger than this. Uh, I mean, I think you should have probably just went Pokemon Go at that point. It would have saved you a couple ducats. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have bought a game. And she does like to sit on my lap and watch me play Pokemon Go for like five or ten minutes. So... I could have See? just kept it with that. <laughs> just ask Daddy, and I'll tell you everything you need to do, Jim. Oh. Like the Vectrex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a post today on Twitter where a guy was like, man, I regret not buying this uh, five years ago for, it was like 200 250 something like that. And that was probably the same too many games we were at when we first saw it. They're like, you should buy it. I was like, oh, nah, I don't need to spend this on that. And now I'm going to be spending like, 600 to a thousand if i was ever going to get one which <laughs> i am not going to do so if i didn't do it then i'm definitely not going to do it now you know what the, it'll i can guarantee you though that would be something like you for as much as i get dumb luck you get dumb deals you're sent your way like yet you got the coleco which i mentioned to you alan's attic for a pretty good deal because it came with a lot of games yep you got two copies of def jam it just free yeah. sent to you like you get these bundles of games sent to you and they end up having some gems in them so i wouldn't be shocked if you went to a random like yard sale or like another allen's attic style and you're like holy shit they, they don't know what this vectrex is they probably think it's a monitor and they're selling it for like a hundred bucks <laughs> that, that would be the dream i mean i keep searching every goddamn thrift store for either a 3do or a nuon and I'm still hoping to find that kind of luck too <laughs> Ah, we're, we're, a Pan- we're a pioneer laser active oh god oh god the grail don't do that to yourself just stick looking for the back trucks leave all that other crazy shit alone Jim. i will look for, i will look and continue to look i need to consume <sighs> so yeah i um i 
did we? We had last week's podcast. Was that when I got number one in Tetris 99? Or was it in between? No, it was in between. We talked about it last night when we recorded with them. So. Yeah, so because of you, I picked it back up. And I said on Reliving Retro, that is my... When I'm pooping, I'm going to play two or three games of Tetris 99. And I just so happened to win the one day. And as Jim put it, I was going against a lot of random squiggles. And I still won. <laughs> So you can't use that against me, Jim. They're probably slow squiggles. <laughs> there is something. <laughs> yeah, I it, it the game is dangerously addictive, and it is the perfect like just one more, just one more. But it's like the variance of like you can be second, and then the next game you're thirty fourth. You're like, what the hell? Like there's almost no rhyme or logic to it. It is what it is. So Jim, I am still pulling for you to actually get a win here. But all my time as of right now is in Resident Evil 4 Remake. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty damn far now. I just, I'm going to the island where Krauser took uh, Ashley. So I just beat, uh, um, what the hell is his name? Ramon Salazar. Oh, okay. So here's the deal. I am such a sucker for like gimmicky easy ways to beat bosses and i actually saw something on facebook or something about like if you hit them with the golden egg you can like then knife his eye and it makes it way easier my god did that work like a charm yeah. like i was done that boss fight in like 30 to 40 seconds and i was like holy shit like this really did work so yeah i, I i've been blasting through that game it's a ton of fun it is really well done however I'm coming up to the section I hate the most. That island not only bores the shit out of me, but that's when it's like, it might as well be called Resident Evil 5 at that point, where it's just pure action. You got dudes with Gatling guns. You got whatever. I don't know if in the remake, maybe they made it a little more horror-y, but I have a feeling I'm in for the same bullshit from the original game. horror -y. So, yeah. Um great game i do highly suggest it uh i got nothing negative to say about it. i'll say it right now like i i think it is great and i love seeing how many people are really into it because nice. it's always nice just begs the question which one are they going to remake next now you you'd guess with the current trajectory it'd have to be five i mean do you think though at this point now they finally they got through the one that probably everyone cared about the most did they finally throw a bone and do veronica or zero i would like to see zero with some quality of life improvements but i don't know it's weird it's weird that they skipped so many to go right to four like i kind of get it but at that point if you're just going to go for the heaviest hitters why even do three so i don't know i mean but that that goes my point like i feel like now they have enough breathing room where yeah if they redid zero got rid of the drop dropping inventory bullshit did the quality of life improvements that game could be actually pretty damn fun veronica i don't know what yeah there there's a lot that they could do and that that could turn into a good game and get rid of really, steve that would be very interesting to see what they do with the twins yeah yeah today's uh, climate oh boy yeah yep so Maybe one of those we're going to see. I think we'll see those before five. Five, uh, five is like still new enough. And talk about today's climate. The shit five was receiving back when it came out, they would probably completely change the continent that it's even on at this point. Oh, no. They can keep it in Africa, but they'll make it in South Africa. And everyone will look yeah. like Elon Musk. Or it'll just be Australia now. You know, they'll... It, 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 they'll I read a list, Jim, and I wanted to do it. And maybe we will do it on one of the future episodes. But somebody wrote, like, the best and worst parts of every Resident Evil. Yep. And reading this list, you could tell with somebody who probably never actually played them. Because when I think of the worst thing in Resident Evil 5, it's just that Shiva's AI was pretty bad. And the fact that it's the entire game. And everyone knows companion missions are the worst part of any game. And they pointed out how insensitive the game was <laughs> which i'm like but nobody thought it was insensitive to do the same thing in resident evil 4 and spain and all this art like but now it's insensitive because it's a different area like 
it was very tone deaf article and then when you read some of the negatives of the other games you're like oh okay this person is probably just highlighted like oh what was bad about this game and compiled it so we'll talk about it in the future why they're not dark enough so it doesn't matter damn it jim <laughs> but chambers um this week I know we don't have a ton, but what questions do we have from our awesome patrons? Patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game. Where for as little as $2 a month, you can ask a question we will answer on each and every single one of these Power Hour podcasts. I should not do this promo while trying to pour a beer. Uh, first up, from Todd Howard Sucks. With an in-person event announced for Nintendo, which I don't think they've done in years, what are the chances of them dropping a new console on us? Uh, source. Would you also rather fight a flock of goose-sized horses or one horse-sized goose? Okay, first off, let me check out this event, because I didn't actually... Announcing Nintendo Live 2023, an in-person event for fans to take place in Seattle. Experience Nintendo Switch gameplay, live stage performances, tournaments, and more. Interesting. I somehow missed it, this. I also missed this, and it was about a week ago, so... Interesting. Hmm. Well, the fact that this was not flooding my timeline and I didn't see a million YouTubers giving the face with it, but as soon as I typed it in, I did see that. I'm actually amazed. I don't know how it skipped me. But to get to your question, do they tease the next console? I mean, if you want to do... That would be a huge reaction. Like, they would get that pop. They'd get that Road Warrior pop for that. They would, but I think it's going to be a very, very very short like 10 15 second like probably like oh they're not gonna what, show a lot they're just gonna no, show no. a picture if, if anything i could even see them doing something corny like where it's all blacked out but like the lights behind it and it just shows the general shape of what it is the console is ah, the so like be like coming in 2030 like you know whatever year they decide they're actually gonna release this shit i could see them doing something like that unless hey maybe no what they're gonna do is gonna be like Tears of the Kingdom, dual release on our new system, and this. So, yeah, I, I could see it. Um, if I was a betting man, though, I wouldn't put money on it. But I could see it. All right. Now, the real question, right? The flock <laughs> so, of goose-sized horses or one horse-sized goose? A flock of goose-sized horses or one horse-sized goose? I, um, I don't know. I'm going against the one goose. Really? Yeah, because here's the deal. Number one, what defines a flock? When I think of a flock, I think of the flying V. And that's easily so like ten. ten little horse size, or goose-sized horses. Yeah, geese are fucking big. And I'm using the flying V, which, you know, you get a bunch of... That's a lot of goddamn hooves hitting you. It's a lot of shin kicks, that's for sure. And they And, and, they, and horses, unlike geese have those annoying teeth so they could be nibbling at you whereas one big ass goose i'm pretty certain i could choke him out he's got a long neck i can wrap around it i bite the shit out of it punch it like you know he's a goofy fuck now if he's flying okay i just need to avoid the flying but really what's he gonna do fuck him i know he's got that he's got that long bill he could just peck right into your heart rip it right the I'll fuck out upper cut the bill right off his dick <laughs> See, I'm thinking, what do you call them? The, the geese. Because all you got to do, a couple good enough kicks to the head, they're dropping. So, I can the, get a few the before. horses. Yeah. The horse size, the geese-sized horses. Because they're not going to be I've that seen, big. I've seen you try to kick. You slip on the first one. You fall on the ground. They stomp your balls to oblivion. And they bite at your nose. They can take my nose. Yeah. I need one anyway. <laughs> take it. Do me the favor. <laughs> Or they, you get a whole bunch of micro Mr. Hands happening to you at the same time. Then you're really fucked. Well, yeah, then I'm really happy to. <laughs> Damn it, Jim! Won't be going to no hospital like no bitch, just like my hero. <laughs> but Jim, a, a goose-sized horse still has a bigger wang than you, and you're still getting done by it. <laughs> well, yeah, everything does. Fine, wonderful. I still think I can take them. Either way. I would like to Either see way. It. Jim, we still need to set up your boxing against somebody else. I saw the quartering and what's his face? Oh, uh, with Tech USA. That's never going to happen. Those two Jim, slobs. We need you versus the quartering. That's what we need. I don't have to be the quartering. Oh, well, I do piss and drains and shit like that. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm the quartering. 
We gotta, we gotta find an RTU. <laughs> Damn it. But uh, who, who asked that question? Uh, that was from Todd Howard. Todd, I love that question. I like the, the how unique that was. I would definitely ask more like that. Next up from JD Main. Speaking of these fucking fatties talking about boxing. Also, <laughs> Wings of Redemption and Boogie will also never do it because they're two of the laziest people out there. And Boogie will just fucking cry about something or other anyway and then shoot out of school again. Is Wings still alive? Wings of Redemption? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, next just a question. Yep. Yeah, honest question. Next, <laughs> next up from JD Mains. If you have to choose between either video games or beer, parentheses and alcohol, for the rest of your life, which one has to go? Booze, because I can smoke weed. Yeah, I'll get rid of beer. I guess technically that's the healthier choice. Um, I, I won't smoke weed. I'll just be meh. Bored. Maybe I'll, you'll be bored. Maybe, That's what you'll be. Yeah, maybe I'll pick something up. But but here's the deal. Old uh, fentanyl brine. <laughs> that, that is something where it's like I've gone on my stints of just not drinking, and I end up not missing it that much. Whereas video games, I could actually see really miss it. Like you know, I don't watch TV, so I like then what is my then I'll what am I just gonna fucking read books all the time? Like no, so. Yeah, okay. no, unfortunately, the booze would have to go. Would have to go. Yep. Next up from Burn Retinas, retro game collecting has essentially become retro game hoarding. Is now a good time Jim. to cash out and make a mint, or land deals from someone with a lot of sought after games. You're you're not landing any deals. So if you have the wherewithal to cash out, like I don't. I wish I was a stronger man, but yeah, uh, now's the time. Depending, especially yeah. depending on the console, like. If you're a Super NES through GameCube, now is the time to get rid of as much as possible. Yeah, I see a huge dip coming. Um, think like the housing market. Like right now is the time where your house will be valued the highest, but then if you're buying, it's going to be the highest to buy as well. So video games, if you're trying to collect right now, whew, you're in a rough market. Yeah, at least so, houses aren't as bad as they were last year, but video games? Oh no, God. yeah. Yeah, video games, if you were going to sell, if you were ever had a, a thought of, like, I might sell something, it really is the time. Like, do it now. Be honest with yourself. I mean, Jim's a shelf collector, but he's also, as you said, he's a notable hoarder. He loves his stuff, and I don't see him ever truly selling. I wish I could. Yeah. Whereas I, I actually have a stack of some games that I know I don't care about. And some of them, like, I looked up values. I'm like, oh, they're actually pretty decent. I'm going to sell because I just know I'm not going to get them. Or, like, these are games that were handed to me by, like, other people. So it's not even ones I bought. Um, so, yeah, if this is the moment where you feel like you want to sell, highly suggest just do it now. And what I say to anyone collecting, Jim and I fell in the same trap when we first started this channel. We got in this thing of, like, anything we could find. If it was a reasonable price, we would just add to the collection. Yep. And then I think we both got to a point where we realized, like, let's just tailor it to a, something specific. Like, Jim did his River Raid thing or something a little more unique. I'm really just in a moment of, like, if I see a horror game and it's a decent price, I'll get it. But then again, horror games at decent prices is almost non-existent. So my collecting has slowed down significantly. But... Yeah, it's a seller's market right now, I'll say that. Yep, and last up from Rich Dickman. Holy crumpets, I once got lost in the world of Hyper Light Drifter and stumbled upon a room filled with my ex-wives. What kind of craft beer would you recommend to help me forget the dreadful encounter and focus on the game's atmospheric beauty? Hyper Light Drifter. I am looking up what that is. I'm looking it up right now. Very, kind of looks like the dude from Fury, but in a pixelated overhead world yeah it kind of does i got um some gameplay what do you got here it looks cool i'll say that <clears throat> but so <laughs> you imagine you were in this and saw your ex-wife did he say your girlfriend wives so ex wives multiple wives okay um oh it's actually like a tabletop role-playing game adapted i guess weird yeah that. That is not one I'll probably try, but what I will say is, um, what's the name of it? 
Do you remember the name of the beer? Oh, uh, I would go with the Dogfish Head Worldwide Stout. So that is started in like maybe 2016. But here's the kicker with that. It's an Imperial Stout, which I love. So you got a ton of flavor. But here's the kicker. It ranges from 15 to 20%, averaging about 18%. And it doesn't break the bank. So... It's one you can get kind of easily. And my God, for a beer to ever be above 11% and not taste boozy like this one does, it's dangerous. So you want to forget some shit? Get yourself a four or six pack. Go two or three deep with that and you'll be uh, you'll be swimming in the, the neon color of this game in no time. I agree. <laughs> Fuck, Jim. <Jeff. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> no, I just got lost looking at this game. It actually looks kind of cool. But, I mean, 2D action RPG, so I was like, ah, I'm probably not getting around to that. But it does look So cool. Jim's waiting until it comes to uh, limited run, overpays for it, and then never gets it. Luckily okay. for me, it already has, and I missed out on it because I didn't know about it. So, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jim justifies, he's not that bad of a game. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally worth the investment that I made into the physical property. <laughs> Damn it. And then bitch about how it took it a year and a half to get it. Wishes it was Kid Chameleon. <laughs> Shut your whore mouth with that goddamn Which is now out on the bullshit. Switch. Best release for the Switch expansion. <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah, it did just get announced. Jim, by the way, not to cut us off from this, what did you think of those four games? Oh, um, I got to look them up real quick. I remember it was like Pulseman, Kid Chameleon, Flicky, Street, and something else. S- Super Street Fighter 2. Oh, or, or just Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition. Yeah. Um, Which is... Isn't that the weirdest one? Because isn't there already a million versions available for the Switch? Like, standard? Oh, um, I think there's some on, like, the Super NES. Uh, at least one of them maybe like, the original Street Fighter 2. Uh, but there was on the Capcom release. Uh, yeah, it's been on Capcom collection. collections. Uh, you have the Street Fighter Anniversary collection on there. You have uh, Ultra Street Fighter 2, which is actually pretty good. It was just overpriced. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you already have a ton of ways to do it, so... I that's mean, what I mean. That's just that's the only one I went... That's just odd. Like, because it's so available. Yeah, but I mean, I guess if you're already... If you're getting it for free, you know, quote-unquote. I mean, yeah, I guess you don't So care. it's like, yeah, at that point, it's like, eh, whatever. It's a good one to have for the collection, at least. And there's like, always this debate, because, like, I guess in a way, it's technically better than Super. Like, Super, like I like Super more, because it's got more characters, and I like the flow of the fight in that more, but... Like, I think Special Championship is considered a better port. So, I don't know. Whatever you want. Uh, Kid Chameleon, I hate. Flicky. Flicky's boring. But Sega just, like, will just toss out on anything. And Kid Chameleon, though. Jim, one question. Now that you have save states, you could actually beat the game. Uh, Bri, I was recording with save states on my Sega Genesis Mini. (laughs) I did not realize. I thought you were playing original. Oh, no. I was using my Sega Genesis Mini for that one. (laughs) And then uh, uh, Pulseman. Pulseman I never touched, but that was always like one of those cool uh, action platformers that only came out in like Europe, I believe. So I never got around yeah. to playing that. So that's actually cool. Interesting to see that collection. On yeah. It, I mean, you know what? Sega's offerings have been so much better than Nintendo's on there. I mean, granted, you're paying more for it, but. It's better so far, yeah. I, I wonder when you're going to really start getting just full lemons like the Super NES has. Yeah, well, I don't know. Sega didn't have as many Jalico games to cheaply pour it over, so. Yeah. But now, uh, any other questions from our patrons? Nope, that wraps it up for this week. So, once again, thank you to all the patrons for our support. Make sure if you're in the $5 and up tier to check out our newest bonus episode from last week when we looked over the Gringo Poppy with good old Nerdy Nick. And, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Bri, you're welcome. And as always, check out all the tiers for all the different rewards and exclusive content and game review requests and body, 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 body. And head on over to iTunes and Spotify or YouTube, whatever you whatever you haven't checked out before. Leave some reviews, leave some comments. We'll read whatever we get. No, truly appreciate it, guys, every week. And please, if you are listening and you are a patron, get those questions in. We want to hear from you guys, and we love answering for you. Yep, and if you want to be more a part of the community, check the link below to our Discord if you like that kind of thing. Absolutely. All right, Chambers, so interesting news in the world of beer and football. So we have two links below, one from WUSA9.com, which has the video, um, but I found from the Wash 
Newtonian. Uh, basically, it's just a full transcript version of the video. Oh. Um, of the Old Ox Brewing that released the beer by Dan. It's an IPA. And what's this in reference to, Chambers? Well, Brian, uh, fucking longtime Washington Commanders uh, owner Dan Snyder selling the team. He is. And I I saw this. I didn't know that was happening. Um, any words on who may be buying it? I have not seen anything yet on who it will be. Apparently, it's moving closer, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's like, because he's always had like a death grip on it. He's kind of like another Jerry Jones, just mm-hmm. not as successful in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> Even though Jerry Jerry Jones hasn't really been successful since he bought it. Yeah. At least Dan Snyder had some success beforehand back in the 80s. Where Jerry just fucking, you know, inherited some winning team and then never did shit with it after. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he might dead Cowboys fans. He sucks. <laughs> But, Chambers, the Mighty Commanders. Here's my question. Do you think their name changes as soon as it's sold again? I think so. Like, I mean, like, Commanders isn't an awful name. It's not a great name. Uh, I mean, we, we grew up with Redskins, and obviously, given the times, it's like, all right, I guess it makes sense why they change it. Fine. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I almost liked Washington football team more than Commanders. Like terrible. when they called it that for like the year and a half or whatever it was. Yeah, it's all terrible. Oh, but what if they get like a more, even more racist owner in there and he calls him like the Washington? Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> How would you spell that, Jim? A lot of W's and a lot of O's, Brian. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, I mean, according to the Brewers, and I think it's pretty well known. He's not a very loved guy. And on the can, no, no. not only is it a pig in the helmet, uh, it says, tastes like 23 years of bitterness. And if you read out <laughs> all this, it's hilarious. This owner, Chris Burns, who talks about it. Or maybe um, if it's only been 20 years, he hasn't had any success either. So, all right, fuck him. No. So he said within an hour and 15 minutes of its debut, all 350 cases were sold out. So this thing <laughs> sold like hotcakes. And one of his things that I just love is uh, Chris Burns says, there's a big part of the brewery, and frankly, it's just felt like there's been this gray cloud over the team for the last 23 or 24 years. That cloud was lifted last week. And I love this brewer goes on to basically say, IPAs are a traditionally bitter style. We've kind of associated Dan's reign over the team as bitter, period, in Commander's history. So they thought... This is a, a, you know, kind of tastes like 23 years of bitterness. It's very interesting, very poignant. Um, I love it because we talked about how many Philly beers or PA based beers all of a sudden became Eagles fans, you know, when the Eagles were on their run this past season. And how many oh, years yeah. were released with it's a Philly thing that, whereas any other time they want to shit talk Philly, but they wanted to jump on that Eagles bandwagon. So, I celebrate it just because I kind of like, like, you know what? Get with the local flavor. I can imagine some of these. I, I, I just like how the whole, like, the whole area of, like, Commander's Nation came together to just, like, could, just to shit on them. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Even, like, the news articles, like, you know, with Dan Snyder finally selling the team, it's like, wow, like, everyone <laughs> fucking hated this guy. <laughs> yeah, I, uh... But then again, with the moves he made, with the coaching hires he had, with the talent he ran out of town, I believe it. Yeah. I mean, here's the deal. You know what? Um, I feel like football is one of those things. If you have a bad reputation, you're going to get shit on. I like, like I said, I just like that beer and some breweries are taking advantage of this. Now, here's my question. I would put money that of those 350 cases sold, you're going to have some folks that are definitely reselling that shit or, or holding on to it for eBay. Oh, yeah. They're, they, they're, they're, this, the scalpers will not be denied. Is there any Eagles, Phillies, Flyers, Sixers related, if they came out with like some kind of can, and I, like, I said, like I just said, there's a ton of them, but what would be the most you'd be willing to spend on like a limited edition release beer? For one of those teams, um, for what, like a four pack or twenty? Yeah, let, let's just, let's call it a four pack cans. It's like a 
you know, a one-off. Maybe it's one of those teams they won or whatever it is. But, like, you, you know, know what? I know. For, for a stupid one-off like that, I would probably be, like, 25. 25 is where you top off? Yeah. What if they did a four-pack and each can was for each of the teams? And it was something like 50 bucks, but they were really, like, specialized. And from a brewery you really like locally. All right. Would, so, say, like, you drop it that? Say, like, Trogues did one for every team, and it's, like, something that I know I'd probably like. Yeah. Man, that's a tough sell at price, but I might. You know what? I'd probably fuck him. You know what? Dumb me. I would probably buy two, and I'd leave one to the side that I never open and have one that I try to for. That, that was my next question was, I know there's the collector you, uh-huh. and then there's the you want to I know what I am. <laughs> I will say it is a terrible idea. I, I've talked about storing beer not only for not drinking, but even collecting purposes. Um, I've had... I ha- I still had the monster can from War- uh, Modern Warfare 2, which <laughs> eventually like just started leaking. Like it just out of nowhere. And I had a, the Duff beer can, which maybe you got that, me when you that went to Florida. might say more about what's inside of Monster than actually the can, Brian. Yeah, but I but that Duff beer can, and I think you got it for me when you went to Florida. Maybe I don't know, but I know I have a Duff beer can. I, I think I got you that, yeah. And same deal, like I think it just started expanding at one point, and it wasn't in a hot area; it was in my basement. But that was another one that just started leaking. Which, uh, you know what? I was actually uh, when I was getting my like subscription boxes, I I had one beer that I was holding out until like we started doing the show again because you know we didn't do it together for a year and a half because of the coof. I had this, like, Sonic the Hedgehog one. And I was like, oh, a Sonic the Hedgehog beer. This will be perfect when we're together for video gaming. And, like, the outside of it, like, started to, like, almost, like, show mold, like, coming through it. And I was yeah. Like, I was like, up. Oh, I don't think I'm touching this one. Just had to dump it eventually. I was like, god damn it. But it also sat there for, like, a year and a half. So probably for the best I did that. So, yeah, I, you know what? I do think there will be scalpers. But then again, it's going to be whatever diehard fan of the Commanders history and they need to have it as a collectible (laughs) so yeah uh i guess our buddy todd i guess he's technically a commander's fan by proxy so todd you should get some if you can get your hands on it (laughs) yeah you definitely should do that (laughs) no he should and he should send it to his favorite podcast i was gonna say and send it to us (laughs) but yeah no I, i love little stories like that so if you guys ever see anything like that you let us know and let us yep. know how you feel about Dan leaving. <laughs> I don't. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people uh, feeling too bad about that, Brian. You know, I'm going on a limb here. Going to make a very brave statement and say that, Jim. As much as you're wrong, I'm going to say you're right this time. Yay! Ah, <laughs> oh, Jambers. But on a a turn of good news and something that I am uh, really happy you put on here because I saw it like literally an hour before this so actually this week because of scheduling stuff we're actually recording on wednesday so we're yeah. super late into the week but for once we didn't miss out on a lot of cool shit or we're super late on talking about it yeah and depending on when this is released it may be late on friday it'll probably be later on friday it won't be morning let's put it that way yeah but uh this trailer for this game unrecord came out and it's a first gameplay trailer it's like a body cam fps And my God, there are so many comments that have my same sentiment, which is I still am not convinced this is just gameplay footage because Uh, Mudahar, like some ordinary gamer, he was said uh, he was like, oh, no, that's just straight body cam footage (laughs) video. Like, it looks ridiculous. I mean, here's the deal. I like I almost thought like maybe this is like all those games that are um, they are like live action, whatever. Yeah. And they're just showing it. But my God, if this is actually in game engine, in game engine, all that shit. Holy shit. Like now we know what games will look like. It's not a question of if this is what games will look like. And it was, and, um, you know, we're tagging Alexander Spindler, who's a programmer and co-director of the game from yeah. France. Apparently, like, some rappers started, like, his own game development company, and this is, like, their first thing to come from it. So, if the gameplay holds up, I mean, graphically, holy shit, it's already making waves. This is one of those games, though, if this is really what the game looks like, the gameplay won't need to hold up. 
Like this is this goes beyond like yeah, of course you want the gameplay to be good too, but this will be remembered if this can really deliver on that that this was a turning point in like graphics and and development because this is basically an indie guy and to develop something like that now um i saw in the comments some people threw up a few other games that were like hey it's kind of similar to one was a horror game that like very similar body cam style um but i love the one that was like yeah the minimum requirements is like something that could power a spaceship with, yeah with like dolphin blood like he, his write-up was hilarious and I can't imagine what kind of system requirements you would need to run some shit like this at full whatever. Um, but my God, Jim, if, if games go to this, whoo. Oh, yeah. Is that too realistic for you at that point? I mean, right now it's like pure spectacle and it's just like, holy shit. But like that, it, like it's crazy. And like really the only thing that gives it away at the end is like the f explosion at the end, which looks a little more phony. But outside of that there's like i was just like i don't see how this is a video game it's insane looking well and what like, i mean keep... like there's almost no way it can actually look like this like there's that that's the thing is like is this going to be a game where like it ends up being released and it's not even a fraction of what it's showing like you know which i hope is not the case um but what what gets me is the number of times i've rewatched it now what sells me on that it is a game is there's a lot of moments like the guy is moving through abandoned houses all this shit and if you look at the rubble you can tell okay there's some reused assets but there's moments where he's standing next to a dumpster and the level of detail and like the shadow in the corners and like little rust spots where i'm like my god like this is crazy like there are some giveaways that okay this is acid based but like fuck man yeah like, and it's also like some of the most insane lighting i've ever seen in a video. that's what that's the thing is like dear god and like all the people you shoot their faces are blurred in this weird way and like you said the explosion is a little wonky um but dude if if games go like this here's my question <clears throat> growing up where we did and how we did would it be sad, and not that anything would ever fully, like, you'll always have people that will develop in 2D, 16-bit, yada, yada, yada. But if this is, like, the future of all games moving forward, like your football games, your shooter games, your racing games, all look completely photorealistic, do you think that's good or bad? Actually, it's funny you bring that up because racing games for the last, like, generation oh, dude, two, have been the games that have, like, pushed the boundaries of graphics beyond anything else. Yeah. So, I mean, like, the newest Forzas and Gran Turismo's, like, they look insane. Like, the level of detail on those games is, like, absolutely stunning. So we're almost kind of there as far as those go. But to have it with, like, human movement and crap like that, that's just almost, like, next level for me. So, yeah, like, I don't think it's a bad thing. And, like, I don't think it's going to be, like, it's going to be so expensive to develop games to look like this, I think, in the long run. for And for the most part. That I don't think you'll see it all that often, or at least for another generation or two. But yeah, I mean, probably is the wave of the future. It'll be uh, at that I mean, point. Right. That's I'm sorry to cut you off real quick. But yeah. Like, think back to like early PlayStation Four with like the Order eighteen eighty six and how people were like creaming over the graphics in that game, like the water droplets on like the lampposts and all that level of detail. Oh and yeah. You, you, look, <clears throat> you look back at that now and you're like, yeah, it looks good. Well, the point. I mean, it always comes back to what is it called? Uh, Arkham's Razor, Razor? No, not Arkham's Razor. The um, Uncanny Valley, which there's like always a moment, and eventually, if we ever get to that point where like you really can't tell the difference, and with all this weird like AI generated, not only chat, this that pictures, but eventually it will get to a point when it somehow perfectly mimics what you can actually see. The thing that will give it away is just like the biggest problem with most current LED TVs, which is they're almost too clear for the human eye to even perceive, which is why you get a kind of odd look. Like yeah. now they're seeing better than a human could actually interpret. So like you're already kind of past that point. So if games get to there, it's I don't know. I think it, ooh, they ooh, will ooh, get ooh, there. Ooh, ooh. You might you might have just stumbled onto something genius too that they did, like with the blurring of faces. So. Um, we'll get to this in a second, but you're, it's basically like a cop game. 
So, like, blur blurring of faces, like, blurring out the suspects, that's, like, the perfect way to get rid of that uncanny valley. So maybe that adds yeah. to that, like, photorealism that we're looking at. Yeah. But to yeah. jump back into it, it's already got a tiny bit of controversy going on because there's oh, a God. lot of people complaining that you're basically playing a cop simulator. <sighs> bitch, 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 bitch. Shut up. I mean, then don't play it. If you don't want to experience fun, don't play it. You know, like, I don't know what to tell you. If you have that much of a problem with cops, like, don't play it. There you I, go. I, I do like all the comments. They're like, man, I really don't fucking like the 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 vibes of this game, but God, it looks cool. I'm playing it. Yeah. Yeah. And just stop being corny. Get over it. That's a cop. Something. Like, I don't think a cop quite does the shit they do in there unless you're fucking Jason Bourne. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen them shoot anyone on arms, so it's definitely not a cop simulator. Really, Jim? Really? Are you trying to be Stavros? Is that who you are now? <laughs> well, I got the body for it. I don't have the I don't have the fucking Patreon that Cumtown used to have. I should be Stavros. I'm fucking Stavros. I want that goddamn uh, Cumtown money. <sighs> don't get me started. But this game looks absolutely amazing. This is one for sure we will follow until it's actually released. Um, I didn't see. I know this was kind of the announcement gameplay trailer and that it is available like uh, wish list on Steam. Um, it just says release date as of right now to be announced. Yeah. So we're definitely going to follow it. I need to see where this game ends as far as visuals. Um, and it's funny because if you look at the screenshots on Steam, some of the earlier, like some of the ones you push on, like definitely, okay, now it looks like a game. So. Right. Love to see what it looks like, but if you guys know anything else about us, please let us know in the comments below. Let us know if this is a, interests you. Do you think it's shit's becoming too realistic? I'm very curious to see. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, if this actually re releases close to how it's looking here, then fucking bravo. Yeah, I know. For real. Oh, Jambers. But speaking of the opposite of bravo, Nintendo. Um... This is one I don't know if it's overkill. And you know I'm I'm someone who, if you do something to me, I don't respond equally. But, but right, but right, you love to defend Nintendo, so. So Nintendo Hacker is forced to pay them for life after being released from prison. This comes to us from Dextero.com. And Gary Bowser, the hacker, uh, there's a little bit of background but uh, he was one of the people that helped create Team Executor, which created mod chips and hacking tools for consoles, but most notoriously for the Switch, um, using their custom firmware, the SXOS. And apparently their website basically just like laid out, like, here's how you use it. Here's all the things you can do. I didn't realize how easily and crazy modded the Switch was. Like, I thought that was the appeal of the Steam Deck, which is, like, you can hack that shit and do whatever you want with it. I thought that's because the Switch was pretty hard to hack. I didn't realize how apparently easy it was. Yeah, and it's been out for a long time, maybe as of, like, 2020. Exactly. And this guy, this Canadian Gary Bowser, who ran Max Con the Max Console website, which is one of the websites that basically uh, delivered all this information and how to get it, Here's what I find interesting. He's a Canadian who was extradited to the U.S. following an arrest in the Dominican Republic. Really? And it's a Nintendo thing. So there's four layers there I don't understand. Like, number one, I'm shocked. Like, okay, so he got picked up in the Dominican Republic as a Canadian who Canada agreed to extradite him to the U.S., but Nintendo is Jap Japan-based. Yeah, I mean, there is Nintendo of America. There is, but that's what's weird to me is like, so I mean, isn't the Dominican like a is it a principality or that I don't know, I but, but I don't think it's like a Guam or a Puerto Rico, but I mean yeah I don't know, but then or is it that, still like owned by the French or something I forget weird, but here's but like isn't it is it not weird like wouldn't you think the primary lawsuits would be coming from Japan like legit Nintendo headquarters. Yeah, and I mean, it still might be maybe using but he's being, as a proxy. 
he's he's being held up in American courts and being kind of subpoenaed by and like that's who's doling out this shit. So that's, good question. that's that's the only thing that's odd to me. Anyone who knows anything legit legally is probably like, You fucking idiots, this is what's happening. But like from reading it, that was one piece I took away. But basically what came out of um once he was arrested that he he was basically being held with almost fourteen point five million dollars in damages to his name. Yep. Which it's Nintendo, so I'm sure they definitely inflate it. His cost. I, I can't imagine what it actually is. But uh part of his release is that he has to pay the company back on a monthly basis, sending twenty five to thirty percent of his gross monthly income to Nintendo. And so far he's only paid about two hundred dollars of that. <laughs> Good um, luck. So even even this article alludes to it's he'll never obviously pay back that full amount. But they're probably going to stick to it. Like they're probably going to keep charging him whatever he makes. And Oh, it's definitely what do you call it? Like setting an example. But that, there is, that's there, my point. But there is also one layer that isn't mentioned in this article. Uh, I saw it on a bunch of tweets and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of the hacked consoles that he was selling were also selling with a shitload of ROMs put on there of like current gen games and crap like that. Current gen, old gen and crap. So it wasn't like he was just like, so cause there's, different legal quandaries when it comes to selling something that's hacked or selling something i th- i don't think you can sell something that's been hacked like legally well people do that with the the xbox the, like original xboxes so maybe it's a thing of um maybe it comes down to the roms and you can't sell something with like pirated roms on it so i think the piracy is where he got really cornholed even though you know they would have gone after him anyway for selling hacked uh, current gen systems but that's the thing is like I I, I I went into like a layer deep where he pleaded guilty to this shit, to the criminal charges. And but the thing he offered from Team Executor was hardware and software that allowed people to install and play on official games and pirate copy of the various consoles. Yeah, but so, as long as you don't sell it for profit, for the most part, that's not like illegal. Like. But I think Nintendo will shut down things. But yeah, they he sold stuff like that. That and yeah, yeah, so that's the problem. So even if he didn't do it with the ROMs, he was giving them a means to do this and and, selling a means to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those ones where, yeah, you can't let people get away with it. But man, fourteen point five million is that a little overestimate? Well, Fry, there is a legal precedent called fuck around and find out, and I think that applies <laughs> God here. God damn it. Yeah. I mean, I just look at 4.5 million, and I 14. go, okay. 14.5. 14, yeah. But here's my question. Of that, like, how many people do you think actually use that? I mean, it's probably not To get to a number like that, like, do you think it's 10,000, 20,000, 30, like, yeah, like you have to assume that like they just like slap the number for value on the of like value lost on each one of these units, and then just times it by the number of units that he did. Yeah, so that that's the only thing I couldn't find specific details on, which I real is that's kind of what I wanted to figure out. Um, you know, it seems like part of what he earned was only about like five hundred to a thousand a month as an operator of this. And he was allowed to keep some advertising income, which brought his total revenue of like 320k a year, maybe. Yeah, not a so, bad chunk of change. It's not a bad chunk of change. Once again, I'm kind of curious. I'm always weirded out how they try to claim this, but they're claiming that yeah, this this company made upwards of tens of millions of dollars. Which that's the only thing. Like, I feel like having never heard of this shit. Really, tens of millions of dollars, unless you have millions of people getting this, or you're selling it at a couple hundred dollars a pop, how are you making that kind of revenue on just pirated software and hardware? Yeah, I mean, I guess it just depends on how many... I mean, maybe they could have put a fuckload of ROMs onto these things, too, so... Yeah, and who knows, maybe in other countries it sells like hotcakes, I don't know, but... Yeah, had you, you know heard what? of this because, type like... of shit that much? Yeah, because the value of the dollar, like, I mean, you're spending like 90 to 100 bucks on a game in Australia, for example. So, yeah. So, yeah, Nintendo's swinging it hard. I think 25 to 30% of his gross income 
every month is a bit hefty. But as you said, it's definitely a uh, it's a it's a warning to anyone out there. Yeah, and to be clear, like it isn't like the court order said he has to pay twenty five percent of his mo- monthly income. That's just you know with current projections of what he's earning, what it's gonna come out to to pay it back. Yeah. So. Yeah, because when I heard that, when I read that headline at first, I was like, is this like fucking unending indentured servitude where he's just fucking working off his debt for the rest of his life? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I'll, we'll see what actually comes of that. This is our one. I want to see, like, do we ever hear of it again or is it kind of done and settled? Is he going to fight it again in the future? Uh, once again, I never thought of this as that big of an issue, but apparently it is. So. Yeah, especially with the uh, the almighty holder of all IPs, Nintendo. Yeah, they're, they're the wrong bull there. They're a little anal with that stuff, so just just a bit. And how are you gonna have the name Bowser, even as a ice? It has to be a fake name. But how are right. you gonna have that? How are you gonna have the name Bowser? And how are you gonna be Sega and buy the developer company of Angry Birds for seven hundred seventy six million dollars? Where the fuck do you get off, Sega? Can you not well, buy? How the do they game? have seven hundred million dollars to do well, this? That that All we that ever was hear is part... how like dire Sega is. That's the thing. As soon as I saw that, I went, "What is Sega actually worth? Seven hundred and seventy million to buy an IP that was popular a decade ago." I'm sorry. Even if it's still sold today and it made out like hotcakes back in the day, it is not even a shadow of what it was. How are you going to buy this IP for that much? And it wasn't just the IP. They bought the developer. So the thought behind it is Sega is buying Angry Birds developer Rovio. Basically, they want to... Sega wants to expand their mobile phone market. Uh, you know, their reach on there. And, I mean, they've been out there for a long time with it. Like Famously, Christian Wrighthead made all these ports of the classic Sonic games that eventually, you know, became the basis for Sonic Mania and a lot of ports that are actually still like better than what came out on Sonic Origins collection. So they, they've had their, you know, toe in the water before with it, but yeah, just going and buying someone who's been, you know, famous and successful before in a mobile market and going, Oh yeah, you do it. Okay. So this is blowing my mind. If it's true. <laughs> um, and apparently it's okay. close to being done too. No, I, I looked up what is Sega worth? Sega Sammy Holdings. Take a guess, Jim. Don't look up anything. Uh, I'm guess. not. I'm actually trying to see where Angry Birds currently sits on the uh, iTunes market. So, uh, I, I, I guess a billion if they have 700 million. 3.2 billion. Really? Which then made me right away go, holy fuck. Like, I had no idea they would be that high. Um, What do you think Nintendo's worth? Uh, twenty billion. Two hundred billion. <laughs> About ninety-five billion. Wow. All right. I mean, I guess that makes sense. They are. But that makes sense. That's I'm saying in scale of what we think of as Sega to Nintendo. Like, I guess that scale makes sense. I mean, we got to think of current day Sega too. That that's what I mean. Like, so wow. Good. I mean, hey, if you got that kind of money i still think this was a silly silly investment like Man, sega. sega's like not even one percent of nintendo holy shit isn't shocking but you just dumped a ton of your whole in, in entire involvement i mean yeah, they just I, dumped like 15 18 percent of their whole company worth into fucking rovio not smart in my opinion maybe it pays off and I mean, I just looked it up. Like Angry Birds Two is like number fifteen on the uh, iTunes charts for apps. So, I mean, considering how old Angry Birds is and how past its prime it is, that's not bad. It's so not I, bad, but so, it's I mean, also they probably one of those still ones. make their money and they probably still get like residual revenue and shit. I would have to assume they'd make their pennies off of replays of the Angry Birds movie. That that's my thing. Is like. Who really cares about Angry Birds anymore? Unless unless Sega knows that Rovio is coming up with something that could be another banger. I think that's... I don't know. That's an odd one. Just when is Xbox going to buy Sega? Come on. Come on, Microsoft. Just just buy them already. 
Actually, there's an article under it. I was like, wait, why don't I see regular Angry Birds? And apparently they delisted it because of the wider impact it has on the free-to-play portfolio. So, wow, oh, these little cocksuckers. So, uh... Yeah, they took away the original Angry Birds, I guess, because it isn't as, like, microtransaction like, heavy independent. These huh. Bastards. Did not know that. Yeah, Super so... To show their love for the brand in the beginning, and we hope the fans can continue with Angry Birds 2, Angry Birds Friends, and Angry Birds Journey! Where it is to create the best thing. Uh, removed from the store entirely, with the addition being first flight. A way to ensure it no longer appears on the top search for Angry Birds. Uh, picked up a game movie to read. Alright, if you already had it, you can re-download it at least. <laughs> Damn it. Wow, weird. So yeah, they're all about the free-to-play microtransaction heavy games now. So they took down the most the game that made them to, you know, try and milk people. So that's nice. It's pretty damn stupid of them but yeah sega oh do, do i do i download the original angry birds while i can so i can <clears throat> have it on my phone i can have no jam could be a wait. rarity it could be a jam. collector's item you just wait till limited run sells it to you for an overpriced amount come on right i will buy seven thousand copies <laughs> shit that's probably gonna boost up the price of the actual the uh collection on the wii u god damn it jim well listen Sega is always going to do very stupid things. There's lots of companies out there that do stupid things. And right now, Square Enix. Woo! Talk about really being dumb and making a move that Tone doesn't make death. sense to anyone. They are tripling down on blockchain with their new deal um, with Elixir, which is a Web3 platform to promote blockchain games with traditional games. And... Jim, we've been covering since NFTs and all that bullshit came, fizzled out, and people lost a ton of money. NFTs, blockchain, all that shit, the Web3. Will it be the future? Who knows? But we know right now most people don't want it, and a lot of people overpaid for shit for it. A lot of developers started dipping their toes in there. They pulled back, and even Valve banned any game on Steam using it. Yep. Um, a few other companies were basically banned for using it. And here comes Square Enix just tripling down with this deal. And their goal is to basically be able to put out enough regular games with these blockchain NFT games and with hope that people will just kind of not notice the difference, it sounds like. My God, you're living by a thread. And I know, I, hey, I know Final Fantasy is always going to sell well no matter what. Yeah, people but, are hyped for 16. The remake sold well, and they have a couple more editions of that coming out. Uh, I guess the Pixel remasters did pretty well. But my God, are you just trying to cement your place in game development as you're never going to take off that well? Like, you're going to be that scumbag that really tries to go this route. Like, they already tried to do NFTs with Final Fantasy VII trading cards. I don't know, Jim. I mean, like, it just seems like so. Because, like, it. Like, anything crypto or anything NFT related right now is just such a. Stay it's a laughing kind stock. Of, yeah, it's a laughing stock. Like, the market completely bottomed out and crashed. So. In this like, article, which is from IGN, I will say <laughs> they even have a poll in there which says, Would you ever consider playing a game with blockchain or NFTs involved? I click, I will never play any game that uses blockchain or NFTs. That stands at 90.2% of people that did vote. And it's a little over 1,200, right under 1,300 votes. Yeah. So the only people looking at IGN and this type of shit are gamers in general. Man, imagine being part of that very small sect. And you know what? Who knows? Maybe just like when... Uh, uh, God, why am I blanking on it? Coinbase was selling um, the Bitcoin. Like back in the day, there was you know some nerds like Bitcoin's gonna be the wave of the future. And you're like, shut up, nerd. No, it's not. And then we're all like, many years later. Like, yeah, we should listen. Who knows? It it could go this way. Web three and whatever it could be the wave of the future. But man, the immediate. I imagine backlash this is gonna come down on Square Enix. It can't be smart. I don't know. And it's like 
they were in a weird spot too, because like we like you immediately just think of like in, um, Final Fantasy, but they've had a lot of success and shit like that. Especially, I mean, they might just be a publisher for these games, but like anything in that like Octopath Traveler kind of like look. So Octopath One and Two and Triangle Strategy and Bravely Default and all that. So. I guess they're still making their money on just like that traditional model and having all these acclaimed games. So it's so weird that they're still trying so hard to push this crap. Because for almost seemingly no reason. They, Unless like I, they really do think it's going to be the forefront of the future and they just want to be there for it. And just say damn the PR because we'll be right in the end. That could just be the gamble. It's possible. I mean, or the deal with Elixir, maybe it was just so golden that it was like even if it takes off a little bit, we'd be stupid not to take this. I don't know if they're giving them points on it. Like, like I, I don't know how it works. It's just like the same deal. Like you, you, you're familiar with Jack Nicholson's deal for Batman, right? No. So Jack, Jack Nicholson took basically like almost very little to no money when he got the role of the Joker, but he took points basically or a percent of every sale of the movie or any merchandise anything linked to batman or joker like one to two percent and it wasn't limited to the movie it was toys everything else so he got paid like a fucking goon and everyone's you know who else did that robert downey with iron man and the and i don't think it was just iron man it might have just been like marvel marvel in general general. yeah just like that So he is a cash millionaire now from doing that so it's like yeah, I, could this be a situation like that? Maybe they have some stake in Elixir where it's like, I don't know, any game in the future that uses this stuff, maybe they have a stake in I, I don't know. Like, that's the only thing that would make sense to me. Or they just got offered like a trillion bucks for it. I, I really can't understand it from a business standpoint because they they should understand what the backlash is going to be. And they've been like, hearing it for a couple of years now, too. Yeah, so we'll we'll follow this like anything else. I'm curious to see if any other developers, kind of or publishers, go down this path again or start relooking at it because it seemed like a lot pulled back. Square Enix, uh, probably not smart on your part, though. I'll just say that. Or it could be incredibly smart. We're the dummies. Possible, possibly, possibly, <laughs> probably, but not impossible. So, Jamers, before we get to our voicemail, I did have one thing I wanted to throw out there. Yep. Maybe maybe it becomes a, a semi-reoccurring bit because we, there's only so many we can do. But one thing I was thinking of um, was, like, what are some unspoken gaming laws? What I mean by that is the things that's, like, it's not inherently, like, known. But to gamers out there, like, we all experience it and we all generally agree. There are certain rules you abide by when playing games. And I want to break it down in each episode by certain things. So the first thing I was thinking of is couch gaming. And I want to see if you agree with my mini list I created here for just the unspoken gaming laws. Oh, God, we're making lists off the top of our head? The fuck? Yeah. Well, I, I put some thought into it and you can research it and I think most people would agree. But, uh, all right, so for couch gaming, you're going over your buddy's house, you're playing. Rule number one, player one sits on the left, player two sits on the right. Um, Doesn't have to happen, but that's pretty standard. I linked that up with the idea that controller one is on the left, controller two is on the right, and you don't want to cross the streams. Yeah, okay, I guess that's fine. I can go with that. And, and think, and probably, I would also say it's more fair to assume wired controllers for oh, the yeah, obviously sake. Yeah. yeah you're get, if you're going over someone's house you have to expect you're gonna get the bad controller you're yep, not gonna that, get the good that, controller yep however if you if you have a friend come over and you're gonna play the game you know you're better at as a handicapped you as the house owner should be using the bad controller and giving them a good controller to compensate for a game that you know you're probably gonna beat them at it's a sign of good faith. Yeah. It's one that I think most people should agree with. This next one is something Jim is very, very guilty of in many people. You should not screen watch. A lot of people do it, but you should not do it. And that should be known, right? Yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah, I'm just saying. You should not do it. 
Yeah, if you don't want to win, then. And yeah, if you get ahead, caught you screen pussy. watching, you should get hit. I'm just saying that. <laughs> and like when it's blatant, like Jim, who isn't paying attention to me because I'm very far from him and I have him on my sniper sights, and all of a sudden he ducks out of nowhere. You know, there's some bullshit being called there. Um, Bride, that was before my drugs and heavy drinking phase. So <laughs> my sentences were extremely heightened at that time. I was just good then. No, you weren't. <laughs> I would have been the king of Tetris 99 the, if they came there back then. There, there was four of us playing. You were engaged in combat with somebody else. And you just so happened to keep ducking and laying down out of line of sight of my sniper. Because you didn't even see me on the screen. So you knew what you were doing. Right. If you're not ducking and dodging, look, uh -huh. I, live and, I lived and died by the movie Dodgeball. All right. You if you're not just juking all over the place, then you're not playing right. The next law is if you're playing a fighting game, you can't pick the same character. If someone picks a character, you got to go with somebody else. And this can apply to racing games, too. It's it's very it's it's no, you can't yeah, pick the same guy. Makes it the know, only I, time you I'll, can I'll do say that. It makes it boring, but if you're those, like, what do you call it? If you're those, you know, fighting game community autists, it's probably bound to happen. Yeah, but if you're that, you're what not. What if you're training, Brian? What if you're training and you have to be the best then, you can be and see how other people can be the best? Then you're at a competition and you don't have real friends. I'm saying this is when you have real friends over your house. It's general rules. If, if you pick someone first, I can't pick the same guy. Now, unless you want to say, hey, who's the best at playing as Guile? And let's see who's the best. And then you want to settle it with that. That's fine. But in general, if you pick them first, like if you go to Toad on Mario Kart, I can't, I shouldn't be picking Toad as well. All right. Depends it's understood. I'm saying this, these, these are house rules that everyone should abide by. And then the last one, the easiest one I can think of, which is if you aren't playing a co-op game and you're, taking turns playing automatically if you lose or die even if it's a bad beat just pass the controller don't be that guy that's like oh just give me one more try no 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 yeah i'm fine with that just pass the controller if you lose or die so this is just covering those couch co-op things but in general what do you think do you agree with the list some I, for the most part i agree they, they all seem pretty fair I think I think fighting games like if you like I, like maybe like I think if you do it every once in a while it's fine to be the same character but if you're doing it like game after game after game then that's annoying. I just look at especially if it's a game that there are some games where you can't pick duplicate characters. Right. So it's kind of settled for you, but I I kind of feel like that's a weird thing. Like if you're both playing Smash and you're like, "Well, I want to be Samus." Well, I'm Samus. Like just switch off. Like one plays Samus at one time, one plays the other. Like when I was Max for Super Street or Streets of Rage 2 and you couldn't be Max because you know I was a better Max as I proved it. You know, like we can't both be Max. That would be corny. You got to have some variety, Jim. <laughs> Prove you're the better Max. You stole you, Max from me. Hey, I was over your place. You gave me the bad controller. So I had dibs on the better character. It's only fair. No, fuck you. It's only fair. No. I proved it. I did better than you, you know? After And look, after I died, I didn't choose Max again. I had to switch off. You chose Max next. See? It works out. Did you even die? I mean, probably not because I'm so good, but I think I did, and I eventually became Axel. I know you died a lot of times because you sucked, but... Yeah, when I'm goddamn, like, skater, any of the characters I never play as... <laughs> <laughs> Jim, just say it. It's been it's on video. It's proven. <laughs> nah, yeah, okay, proven. <laughs> any right. any rules you can think of from a couch gaming? Just stri sticking with that because I, I have ideas for laws for other things like multiplayer and da 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 da. But just couch co op rules of etiquette, if you want to call them, whatever. Anything else you can think of? Um, not the time I had. I'm thinking of a lot of random Halo ones right now, but it, I don't think it goes for like couch cut play. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Like I said, I just wanted to throw it out there. Just some fun I wanted to debate you on. Because I know you'll always be on the side of, just do what you want. Pick odd job if you want. Who cares? No, 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 no. no. Even I'm like, no, fuck odd job. Never. <laughs> All right. So, now, let's uh, let's get to his voicemail, Jim. I'm going to try this again. Um, 
uh, 267-991-0156. Let us not forget that. Thank you. That I mean, we've had at least one voicemail every week since we uh, started the lineup. So it's cool to see people participating that way. It's a lot of fun. Nah, we appreciate it. All right. So we only have the one voicemail this week. And you know what? It's not TJ. It's a different number. So I see the name in it already. But uh, yeah, here we go. Let's hear it. Jim and Brian, surprise, surprise, you sons of bitches. I'm drunk. Yes. This is uh, Alex Perez, one of your uh, top 200 favorite patrons. Anyway, so question. How did you guys decide on your favorite... No, wait. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck. How did you guys decide on your respective gamer tag names? Uh, Mersey07 and Jambers Cambers. Just curious. Cheers, gents, you bitches. I love you. Love you, Alex, and you are you are in our you are in our top favorite. Are you kidding me? We love you, bud. Yep, and actually credit to him for actually getting my uh, my gamer tag pronounced right. Most don't say it right. They always they I mean, always say Jambers Cambers. But at the same time, Jim, I call you Jambers all the time, so you probably put two and two together. This is true, but there are people who listen who haven't put two and two together. So, are you are you calling our anyone who watches us not smart, Jim? No, Brian, anyone who watches us are obviously the smartest of people. But they just might not pay attention to me, they'll sing every time. Uh, so, uh, so, Chambers, I mean, you might as well give, I mean, your answer's easy. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so back in college, uh, our buddy, Burn, we call him Burns, uh, he would just randomly break out in song, you could say. And this was me during the height of my cigarette smoking and my weed smoking, so... He randomly just called, started me calling me Jambers for whatever reason. It's just Burns doing a Burnsism, so it'd be like Jambers smoking on Wayneburs. So that just evolved to like a thousand names strung together. So like Jambers, Wayneburs, Bambers, Wayneburs, Jambers, 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 Cambers. So I just like shortened it to Jambers, Cambers for my gamer tag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So Mersey. Uh, uh. It's a, it's a storied history, but the easy answer is... Brian's racist. It's a racist dog whistle. Don't listen to him. <clears throat> um, it's a very corny story. Let me start with that. It's not anything to be emulated, but back in my grade school, there may or may not have been a little gang I was a part of, and you may or may not had to come up with tags that you would then graffiti in certain places. <laughs> so you had to have call tags. Um... And our gang, Squad Deep, was, uh, you know, Mersey was just a name where I was like, well, I don't want, uh, like, other people were using, like, what I would call more normal. I literally put together letters that I thought looked cool if you did tag something. So it, like, the way it wrote out, I liked the way, like, the M with the R with the Z with the Y. Like, you could do a cool design. And I actually have a lot of my old, like, notebooks where I would, like, write up a way to do it. And that just looked cool. I didn't, like, a Mersey is not a, it's not a thing. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So that was a thing for a long time. And then I grew up and, you know, whatever. Uh, when my buddy Juan lived with me and he got the Xbox, he, he was actually one of the first people I knew who had an Xbox other than our buddy Chris. Um, he was, like, trying, me and him, like, played it, like, religiously. He's like, oh, what's a name we could, like, create? And I threw out there. I was like, well, how about Mersey? And we do 215. And that was, like, his name that we created because, like, we would literally just stay up all night handing the controller back and forth. So that name was really me and his name. Um, and then when I got my own console, it was just Mersey 07. So seven's my favorite number. Put that to it. And, yeah, that, that just then just became what it was so like you said it's a name it is what it is right I'm, how many fucking of your little doodles did you like i i just goddamn know that like you did so many designs of mersey like some kind of jeff hardy style um i mean i would call it more graffiti i don't know if i mean as was jeff hardy would you consider that graffiti no i i I did it in a million styles. I'll just say that. Like, I mean, as a kid, I drew all the time. So, like, I had no... I had, oh, The amount of comp books I have of just crazy designs and shit. Um, so, I wrote it in a gazillion different ways. I can say once I went to 
high school and you know the high school I went to um, going from the public school I went to which is every time I would visit other schools they'd say do you guys carry guns there like it was not a good public school like it was known it had bars on the windows still has screens there like it was not a good good area good good neighborhood I'll just say that um, so I dropped that shit once I got to high school so that, I'll just say that I never got caught which is good too <laughs> for anything we did because it was it, it like like any stupid thing in that those areas you start off and it's just tagging stuff and it's you get in other trouble you do other things and you know then you grow up but that name like i said i've always liked the way it looks i am always shocked when people say it the way i imagine it i don't even know if mersey is the right way you should pronounce those letters that way because i've heard people be like mersey like but I, you know, people fuck have fucked up my name all the time. How you fuck up my name is one of the easiest names, but people do it. Your name, my name's in goddamn history books, <laughs> and they fuck up mine all the goddamn time. <laughs> I had a very popular movie that ruined my life for a couple of years, and they still fuck it up. Yeah. Napoleon, you know how many times I've heard Napoleon in my goddamn life? <laughs> I mean, you were based off that character, right, Jim? <laughs> <sighs> Jim, I mean, good thing you were already really popular in high school, because I'm sure that movie gave you no problems. <laughs> Didn't really affect me more until college. It came out like <laughs> in between. So, yeah, that's that's how Mersey came to be in 07. Is like, uh, that's my question for you, Jim. Did you ever have like a kind of default number? If you're going to put your name in front of something, like, do you have a default number you go to? Um, well, not really. I never had like a number that I like lobbed on to. Hmm. So if you get the, <laughs> I'm not trying to be demeaning, but if you were put on a sports team and you got to choose your number, what would you choose? Um, I would probably, uh, uh, that's a good question. I don't know what the fuck I take. Like, do I take like one of my favorite numbers growing up that isn't already retired? Like, you know, say I landed on a baseball team. Like, would I take, like, 26 to be Chase Ali or something like that? Maybe. That Maybe makes me sad, like Jim. That. See, I was hoping you would just – I think everyone should just have their number. Like, my brother had nine. I was seven. Like, I feel like everyone I, – See, I wonder, too, like, is that, like, a number you are given as a kid for, like, a early sports team and you just, like, lobbed onto that? Because, you know, I mean, when, you, when you play in the National Junior Tennis League, you're not giving jerseys with numbers. Well, it's ironic because at first I didn't I, – I didn't – seven's the day of my birthday, but I didn't actually like it as a kid. Like, I was, like, actually, like, I don't like the number seven. And then I grew to like it. And then it just – not because of my birthday, but then, like, you you know, you hear seven's a lucky number, all this shit. So it's like it just became my number. But then, yeah, it was on my sports teams and whatever. I have no idea where my brother got nine no clue at all but that became his number and like other people i knew had like just various numbers i, I don't know how they get created but it's odd that you've never because like if i create a username it's going to be something probably 07 if i have to put a number in there so that's odd that you've never i, I think like that. anytime i've made like a username for like you know some dumb website i'll just put 86 on there at the end for my birthday okay. so yeah hmm that's interesting. So I guess 86 would be it then? I guess. I <laughs> Jim, just so indifferent about everything. I just don't care about anything. <laughs> I, we can tell. The fucking, the, the drudgery of everyday life has just beat me into submission. <laughs> Such a broken oh. Now, but <laughs> you know what? If you're listening, we want to know what is your number? What's your go-to number when you create shit? I'm Jamers Capers 41. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you being the one that's like 69. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Jim. What was your AOL name? Oh. <laughs> oh, you want to talk embarrassing? I got it. I got it too. I got a two bagger for this one. Oh, let's hear it. So the first one was Hitman, the number 10, and then IS. Because for whatever reason, my tennis coach at the time called me the Hitman, I guess, for liking wrestling and Bret Hart. So, and then 10 IS for tennis. So, Hitman 10 IS. Which is bad. I think the next one's even okay. worse. Okay. 
which was just Batman DX because I loved Batman and DJ. Everyone X. with that fucking Batman DX. Yeah, the D like Man, when DX came out, that was everyone's standard. Just the use of X. I will say that. I'll give you... You know what? Batman DX isn't that bad because that one I, I kind of like better because everyone used DX. You didn't know any better. Like, so DX is also kind of... But, Brian, I was 23. Oh. No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, I was, I was 12. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no. AOL, listen, I can't think of anyone who had a cool one unless you were just so lame and you're like, I'll just be... Jim 10. Like, like you know, you'll just be whatever with a number. Like, you know, everyone I knew had a very corny name. I mean, mine wasn't good either. It was X Scream 911. <laughs> it, it, it was, people were like, what does that mean? It was like, obviously, like the movie Scream, X, you put X's in front of shit, 911, like, is a sign of like, oh, yeah dangerous like what, there, what's there the was, version of that now is it like whatever your tiktok handle would be for kids these days that's, i guess that's what i think like but then again have you ever actually looked at like a tiktok name like i don't think people even know what channels are watching on tiktok I, I guess the equivalent would be a twitter handle and i i said one thing that drives me nuts is the people that change their fucking names all the time i know their main one never changes but like I, the number of times I've not known like how to get a hold of someone because I don't have their original at, and then they change their things and they're clever. They're like, in Halloween season, I'll be boo. It's like, that's probably more the equivalent, the Twitter name change. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, no, the AOL names. I mean, there was there was definitely yeah, that was a, that was a time. There was a place yeah. and time. <laughs> but no, Alex, I do like the question and always call us when you're drunk, bud. We always appreciate it. And we, we appreciate the support and always uh, listening and supporting us. So yes, thank everyone you, should call us when they're drunk at all times. <laughs> Absolutely. So with that, we want to say thank you so much, everyone, for listening. We truly appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, please do that. Hit the notification bell because the algorithm is in cough. And when it comes to the uh, iTunes or Spotify, if you give us a five-star rating, we will read any review you give us, even if you want to bash us, but that really helps support us. So with that, we want to say have a good night and cheers, everyone. Cheers, guys. Thanks again.